So you've got your Arduino, your two nice shiny screens, and you want to display different things on each screen. Let's plug it in. And no, the same thing is appearing on both screens. How do we solve this? Roll the titles. Is that it? So basically, as you can see from the start of the video, I've written some code which displays a line going up and down the screen and a line that goes horizontal, backwards and forwards like that. And what I want to happen is for, on this screen or whichever, have a line going up and down like that and nothing else. And on this screen, have a line that goes backwards and forwards in a horizontal direction like that and nothing else. So two different displays to displaying different things. Now, these are R2C devices, so we've got our R2C bus coming off the Arduino there. And I've connected both displays to the R2C bus. As you do with all R2C devices, they all share the same data and clock, the same bus. The blue, in this instance, I'm keeping as the data, the yellow I'm using as clock. The problem with R2C is that each device on it has to have a unique address a bit like a postal address and each one of these devices is listening out for information for itself and the second problem is when you buy these generally they're hardwired to one address and that is it now you can have up to 127 different addresses and they're just numbers so you have a zero which is address zero up to 127 and these devices are in hex 3c which is what's that he says doing it in his head in decimal that'd be 48 plus 12 58 60 so in decimal these are address 60 and they're both listening on 60 so when the arduino sends some information out for a display it can only talk to a display on 60 so it says okay i've got some information for device number 60 which we know as the display and here it is so it goes out on the data bus device 60 accept this data and the thing is because it's a shared bus it's like somebody shouting out information and you've got a lot of houses all listening for information but the person that's shouting it will first of all shout the house number so okay number 17 and then tell them what they need to know and each house is listening all the time but they only care if that had if the address that's shouted out first is theirs. So those at number 18 will pay no heed to it whatsoever. Once it says, this is information for address 17, 18, 19, 20, 37, 127, 15, whatever, will no longer bother listening or taking any attention, paying any attention to that data. But we've got two with identical ones. So when it sends the information for draw this line here and draw that line there, it's saying it, sending it out to address 3C, address 60, and they both listen, they both accept the data, and they both display. So, because we can't change those addresses, if we could, that'd be great. If I look like switches on the back, we can set the address, and some R2C devices might do some limited form of that. That'd be great, but they don't. So we need what's called an R2C multiplexer. Oh, and I must have mentioned, uh, today's pointing device is brought to us by the uh, Disney Corporation Pixar and it's a Toy Story pencil hastily borrowed from one of my children right then, so we've got this, it's a multiplexer uh, I can't remember the name of the chip uh, I'll put it on screen now because I can't remember what it is now off the top of my head and I could, if I, I could have a look at the front although it's on there isn't it actually there it is actually it's the TCA9548A uh, basically that's the chip in the middle this little breakout board so what this does, it will allow you to Connect in the Arduino's R2C connection up here. So you've got power and ground and then the, the data and the clock go in there from the Arduino. And then it has many, many R2C outputs. When I say many, many, it sounds actually like it's a real lot. But actually there's eight. It goes from data and clock zero. So we've got a 
and I squared C, sort of connection zero, connection one, or connection two, whatever that might be, up to connection seven. So this is support up to eight devices of the same address. Because what you're doing, you're just sending the I squared C data into it here, and then actually you can select where the I squared C data then goes. Does it go to zero, to one, to seven? So what we're going to do is basically connect this, this screen up to zero, this screen up to one, and then this itself is an I squared C device and its uh, address is hex seven zero. And if you're asking what that is in hex, well, it'll be seven times sixteen, which is what seven seventy. That's one hundred and twelve. <laughs> he says, doing some quick maths. Not my strongest thing. So, we'll can, with all the information. Sorry, this is itself an I squared C device. So actually, we'd begin by talking to this first. We'll say, we'll talk to it and say, I want all the information that you got on here to go to zero or to go to one or to go to three whichever but we select whichever device connection are going to receive this data at any one point in time so first of all we say hey let's say we want to talk to the screen we will say to this device send it to i squared c device i squared c address 70 would say right only send data to this connection zero here and then we will happily send our information to our screen at the normal address of 3C hex and it will route it to this. And then only this one will see the actual I square C data because the other screen is connected onto the one connection there, the data and then the clock connection for connection one. That will not be passed, that data will be stopped from going down that connection to this. So it will only go to this. And then when we finish drawing to this screen, we'll then say actually. Now send everything to this one here, and then it will send everything to this, and this can't ignore it or accept it because it can't even see it. No data will be going over this connection to this while we're talking to this one. And that's basically how it works. So I'll actually put, sorry if not the camera, let's put, sort of move it back a little bit. So I'll wire this into the circuit in the way we've just sort of described, and we'll go on from there. So what we've got is the I squared C connections of data, the blue line and clock, the yellow line coming off the Arduino into the main data and clock connections of the multiplexer. The multiplexer also has its own uh, power connections. So into SDA and SCL, the main the connections from the Arduino go. And then in SD0 and SD1, so SD, not SD1, sorry, in SD0, the data connection goes to screen zero, or what I'm calling they're going to be the zero screen, and the clock SC zero goes to there. So both SD1, SC zero are going to the connections of these connections of the clock. For SD1, which is this connection going here, down to there, and this connection SC1, the clock for the output one, go to this screen. So output zero, of the I squared C bus from this, go to this screen, and output one of this device, go to the screen. So this is going to be screen zero and screen one. Okay, so now we've got it uploaded. You can see I've got a line going up and down, and a different line going backwards and forwards in the horizontal direction. I'll bring the coder that does this, and just explain it. We can see the connections I've done, just like we said we would. So looking through the code, so here's the solution, it is more complex, there's no getting way around that. You write them to two screens, you need to write them at different times. So it's basically got the same sort of setup variables at the top here. You only initialize one, sc one screen. Because it, this, as far as the Arduino is concerned, really, you can have only talking to one screen, you're just going to display one thing on it, and then we'll display another thing on it. But we cleverly flip which screen is going to get that information. So we clear the display as we did before. We write the line, or we draw the line that's going to be going down the y pos. So that's actually the horizontal line going from top to bottom. And then we use this command here, which the function is just below. I'll go to in a minute. We basically are saying use display zero. Set the display to use to zero is what we're saying there. And then we just display to that display. Now, different displays, different driver libraries have different ways of sending the information to the 
actual display itself. Uh, the, the 83 library which I'm using here, sort of like, you can do all your drawing and writing of text and whatever, nothing appears on screen so you give it a final commit here. So before we set the display here we can write whatever we want to and nothing's actually on that display until we actually do that line there. So we say right, just before we actually send it all to the display itself, we actually set it to zero and then display it. So that's gone to that OLED, that's fixed, that's safe. You're not going to lose that unless you overdraw it again. So we now clear the display, but again, the terminology is not that brilliant in the fact that we're clearing not the display itself, otherwise it would lose all its screen. We're clearing an internal memory area that the Adafruit driver uses. So that's clearing that, dis uh, that area. We've still got that line on, the, on screen zero. So we've cleared the, the internal area. We're writing a line to the internal area, which is the line now that's going to go backwards and forwards from left to right. And then we're setting it, phone going off in the background, and then we're setting it to say, look, use now though. If, when I want to send anything over the R squared C bus, and none of this has sent anything over the R squared C bus yet, this is just going to internal memory, we're going to set it to screen one. So now on R squared C one on that multiplexer, we'll receive all the R squared C data. And then at this point, that's when the 83 library will send it over that actual R squared C bus and so now display one will get that line and then we do our move into the lines we did last time and the whole routine starts again we clear the internal memory write the line set it to display on screen zero so now we've moved that uh, vertical line going up and down and then we display it and again and we go around and around so depending on what device you're writing to or even reading from I mean temperature sensing is a popular use for these multiplexers. Quite often you want more than one temperature sen sensor, perhaps several, perhaps you've got them in plant pots or perhaps you've got them um, one inside, one outside of the house and it's the same sensor on the same address, you need to be able to multiplex them. It wouldn't quite be like this, would it? Because every driver for every little sensor you're going to use is going to be, is going to be a little bit different. So you have to be aware of how that driver works to be able to write your routine. So yeah, the set display routine is very, very simple. We wire, this is just um, some in routines for talking over the R squared C. So basically we say, look, we've got to begin the transmission and the address we want to send to is this one, address 70, which is the R squared C multiplexer. Usually you don't see any of this sort of level of detail. It's all within the driver library like Adafruit. You don't see it in any of this OLED stuff all this wire, whatever, is hidden away in the gubbins of that. But because it's actually, this multiplexer is very simplistic, it doesn't really require a driver as such. You just need to quick, basically say, look, I'm going to send the next bit of transmission to 70. Please, you know, want that to be listening. And then, if you look what we pass in, we just pass in here the ID of the R squared C device we want to send to, either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 7. But we have to do a little bit of messing about here because it doesn't want it just as a simple number sent over the sort of R squared C bus. It wants it a little bit more different, so we just manipulate it there. You don't need to know about that. Uh, and in fact, I've copied this from some Adafruit um, demo code. I think I've seen it in other places on the net as well. And then it just ends. So basically, we're just using that set display command, which is up here as well, to simply set which R squared C device we're going to talk to. So obviously this is a very inane example, kept as simple as I could think to do it, yet still give an example with minimum code, so we can see how we actually do it for these displays. What I'm actually going to do with this, I'm going to actually go back, go back to the heartbeat sensor, and we're going to display a trace on one screen, probably this one, and we're going to display the BPM on this one, just simply because it's been requested two or three or more times that can we have a can we display on this on one one screen and a BPM on the other. So that's what I'm going to do as the next project. Okay, so this is actually powered up now. Nothing's happening. The software does work, but one of the problems I've had with this, I don't know whether it's just this particular board I've bought, um, the very cheap version of the. I squared C multiplexer. I have tried various things putting the uh, official 4.7k pull ups on these um, wires and everything, but I can't get it to work quite right. When you first connect up the power, 
Everything appears to work when I've done traces, everything seems to work, nothing appears on the screen. If I press the reset button on the Arduino to give it like a soft reset, then we might get one screen working and it's not always uh, this one, sometimes it's that one. Press it again. And then, lo and behold, sometimes it takes three presses of the soft reset and we get it working. It'll work forever like that now. Even if I press reset again, it won't ever not put both on together. Once it's got them both going, as you can see, everything's fine. Now, when I looked at the data sheet for this um, multiplexer chip, it does fairly clearly state that on power up reset as opposed to a soft reset, so when it's first getting power to the board, it will suspend all data to the screens, not send anything. But then doesn't sort of go on to explain how you sort of then get it to send data. It puts them all into like a high impedance state where they're not sending anything. It's like nothing. There is no output selected. But then I can't find anything on the data sheet that says how you sort of kick it into going. Um, and I don't think you need to. I think it should just eventually, when you send your first commands to check where everyone you want to go, you select, say, screen zero, it should then start sending the data. But that is a problem I've had. I've got that in there. I've even done some test software from Adafruit and it can see the screens when they're locked up as if it's working, but it will not communicate until I've done like um, a sort of a, a reset with using the Arduino. With that, it's all very odd and I don't know what's going on. So in the end, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe if you buy the official Adafruit one, um, it'll be fine or another higher quality one. Now this was the, just the cheapest one I could see in a list from AliExpress. But yeah, I have this problem with it. So I'm going to move on in the next episode. I'm going to show you how you can do exactly the same thing, but not using this. Going a bit retro, a bit old style, a bit 1980s. So until then, like, share, subscribe. Channel's been growing really well lately. So please do that and it helps. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.